Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Breaking news, Jim Comey is out at the FBI. The FBI Director James Comey has been fired. It says today President Donald J. Trump informed FBI Director James Comey that he has been terminated and removed from office. And after a brief hiatus, the madness appears to be continuing. If you're anything like my age, you'd have spent much of your formative years watching popular culture portray Russia as the most sworn and evil enemy of Western values. Then Mikhail Gorbachev came along, Perestroika, a little bit of glasnost, everything relaxed for a while. Berlin Wall came down, we were getting on. Then Vladimir Putin, a former KGB goon, um, managed to get the top job, uh, built a wall around himself, and we kind of went back to business as usual, except for one massive change. Huge swathes of the West do not see the corrupt kleptocracy that is the Kremlin as a threat. They see it almost as an ally. And rarely has that been so clear as in the case of Donald Trump and his alleged links to that kleptocracy, links that were being investigated by the FBI after being provided with a slew of evidence. And the man in charge of the investigation has just been fired by the man he was investigating. Now, in any other universe, we'd all agree that that is absolutely stinks to high heaven, right? In any other universe, in any sort of pre... Um, what are we going to call it? The resorgimenti of racism. Uh, making racism great again is what we'll call it. Before kind of people like Trump and, and our own sort of uh, schmeggy equivalents in this country started making racism great again, we could all have agreed. We could all have agreed. If the President of the United States, Bill Clinton, for example, fired the head of the FBI when the FBI was investigating his relationship with Monica Lewinsky, everybody would have agreed that that looked Looks like an admission of guilt, yeah? If uh, George W. Bush fired the head of the FBI when the head of the FBI was investigating whether or not they had a proper dossier justifying the invasion of Iraq, we all would have agreed that that was evidence he was probably guilty. Um, who was before? You got Clinton, you got George W. Barack Obama, if he fired the head of the FBI when the FBI had announced that they were investigating whether or not his birth certificate really was fake, whether or not he really was a secret Muslim, and then he fired the head of the FBI, we'd have been chomping at the bit to argue that... Uh, it looked like he was guilty. And even people who liked him would have would have not been able to make a defence. He'd go, oh, actually, if they really are investigating whether or not his birth certificate is a fake, that's where it all began, isn't it, actually, from an American point of view. It all began with that. I, I wonder whether, he, looking back, he thinks he should have sued, thinking that people accusing him of having a fake birth certificate. Donald Trump, of course, was part of that process, a fake birth certificate. He wasn't even born in America. And he didn't sue because he didn't believe that people could be so stupid as to believe it. It looked like a little bit of big tent propaganda, a little bit of gaming. But actually, you look at the numbers, the amount of people that believed it, the amount of people that still do, the amount of people that Donald Trump has in his back pocket because nobody holds them in lower regard than he does, he gets them. It made him rich by being so stupid and they've made him president by being so stupid. Barack Obama just gave them the benefit of the doubt. I thought, no, but I mean, there, there just aren't enough stupid people out there for me to bother suing Donald Trump for claiming that I'm not really American. So he didn't sue. And we are where we are. Donald Trump is in the White House and the man investigating his alleged links to Russia, links that are pretty clear if you look at his appointment of Mike Flynn as a national security advisor, um, he's fired the man investigating them. I was on the way to winning until the combination of Jim Comey's letter on October 28th and Russian WikiLeaks raised doubts in the mind. This is CNN Breaking News. All right, we have a major breaking news. We're interrupting that report. Uh, Jeff Zeleny, our White House senior White House correspondent, is joining us uh, on the future of the FBI director. The president of the United States has terminated the director of the FBI, James Comey. It's October 20th, 1973, the Saturday Night Massacre, when Richard Nixon fired Archibald Cox, the special prosecutor. Perhaps mm -hmm. worse than October 20th, 1973. Most tainted actions by President Nixon. Hot on his tail on Watergate. The shades of Nixon. The Watergate break-in. The Saturday Night Massacre. It looks like he's pulled a Saturday Night Live massacre. The Richard Nixon Library responded to commentary that Comey's firing was Nixonian. In a tweet, they wrote, fun fact, 
President Nixon never fired the director of the FBI. It is lost on no one that the president just fired the man who is leading an investigation into the Trump campaign and whether it colluded with Russians. There's a strong feeling at the FBI that uh, the director of the FBI was uh, fired because he wouldn't drop the uh, Russia investigation. Never in history have we had an FBI director fired by a president who was under investigation by the FBI. The New York Times account of this is just stunning. It says Mr. Comey was addressing a group of FBI employees in Los Angeles when the television in the background flashed the news that he had been fired. In response, Mr. Comey laughed. He said he thought it was a fairly funny prank. He actually dispatched uh, Keith Schiller, who was his longtime bodyguard and head of personal security at Trump Tower. Keith Schiller is now the director of Oval Office operations at the White House. He was dispatched to the FBI headquarters to deliver, uh, hand deliver his, Trump's uh, his, letter terminating. Keith Schiller, Comey. his personal bodyguard, was the person who delivered the letter firing the man investigating the president's campaign. That, that is correct. This news tonight came accompanied by a chain of letters. First, from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein saying, I cannot defend the director's handling of the conclusion of the investigation of Secretary Clinton's emails. This memo from Rod Rosenstein is, is says that James Comey was fired for being too mean to Hillary Clinton. Does anyone believe that? Could anyone believe that? I mean, it's just absurd. Comey was not fired because of Hillary. Comey was fired because of the Russians. The White House is peeing on our leg and trying to tell us it's raining outside. I give them great credit for having the courage to right this horrible wrong. And it took guts for Director Comey to make the move that he made in light of the kind of opposition he had. But I'll tell you what, what he did he brought back his reputation. He brought it back. He's got to hang tough because there's a lot of, lot of people want him to do the wrong thing. What he did was the right thing. If anyone thinks that a new FBI director is going to come in and the agency will just take over and, and continue their investigation as if this had never happened, that's not how it works. They will put in a stooge who will shut down this investigation. And now... Donald Trump will put in maybe Chris Christie. President yes. Trump is apparently likely to reach outside the FBI yep. for a replacement director. There were some interesting sightings in D.C. actually. I saw on Twitter that uh, Rudy Giuliani was at Trump's uh, D.C. DC uh, hotel overnight. What I did is I was going to fire Comey. My decision. It was not... You had made the decision before they came uh, in the I, room. I was going to fire Comey. In your letter, they you said I, I accepted, accepted their recommendation. Yeah, well, they so you also, had already made the decision. Uh, oh, I was going to fire regardless of recommendation. So there was really they, room. He made a recommendation. But regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Comey. Did you call him? Uh, in one case, I called him. In one case, he called me. And did you ask, am I under investigation? I actually asked him, yes. I said, if it's possible, would you let me know am I under investigation? He said, you are not under investigation. And at that time, he told me, you are not under investigation, that which was, I knew anyway. That was one meeting. What was the, what First of all, when you're under investigation, you're giving all sorts of documents and everything. I knew I wasn't under. Does the Comey firing cast a shadow of your talk, gentlemen? What's the fire? The U.S. Congress. Yes. You are kidding. You are kidding. How will the firing of James Comey affect U.S.-Russia relations? But there will be no effect. We have nothing to do with that. President Trump, President Trump is acting in accordance with his competence. Today, the White House hosted Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, and more notably, its ambassador to the United States, Sergei Kislyak. The same Sergei Kislyak, ambassador and Russian spy, with whom General Michael Flynn had discussions and then lied about it. It's, it's quite incredible. It's, it's, it's actually quite incredible. I kind of want to just ask you how you think this has happened, because my own explanation is horribly simplistic and not very nice. My own, the only explanation I can come up with, when, when you're asking yourself why an otherwise sensible person would just switch off their brains, close their eyes, put their fingers in their ears, and start whistling Dixie on an issue like this, what does Donald Trump give them that 
they didn't have before. It's not hope anymore. It's not economic hope. He's surrounded himself with um, uh, extremely wealthy people who are set to get wealthier. He's taking away or trying to take away health care from millions of people that thought he was on their side. He spends more time playing golf than... Uh, 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 what's his name? Oh, that's blown my little bit of rhetorical fl fl flourish there. No, the, 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 the Northern Irish fella is really good at golf at the moment. What's his name? It's not Sammy McElroy. Rory McElroy. I'll do that again. He spends more, pl more time playing golf than Rory McElroy. Do you know that the Secret Service pay Donald Trump for the privilege of using the golf buggies that they need to protect him, to guard his life while he's playing golf on his own golf courses? The, the, the scale of the con is epic. And if you're, like me, of an essentially liberal disposition, it means you like people. You give people the benefit of the doubt. You presume that if people are provided with enough evidence that the Earth is round, eventually, however many priests are telling them it's flat, eventually they'll recognise that the Earth is round. Even if Galileo has to spend 50 years under house arrest on threat of being burnt as a heretic, eventually the evidence will out. So what is it that explains this willful, herd-like, bovine refusal to simply recognize reality. I think we're getting close to, to, to the conclusion. I don't know if you've seen the clever papers in America have started talking about uh, cultural insecurity instead of economic insecurity. The idea that it was economic insecurity that made people vote for Donald Trump has kind of been blown out of the water by the fact that all the people who said they'd be a lot less economically secure if he got in have already been proved right. So now you've got this piece, I think it was in the New York Times, claiming cultural insecurity. So people who've never left Wyoming are culturally insecure about events in Dresden, apparently. And that's where the parallel universe theory comes in. Because Angela Merkel's polling over the last 24 hours, over the last three days, has been phenomenal. Angela Merkel's party has done the business in Schleswig-Holstein, which nobody saw uh, on the agenda. Her personal approval ratings to be the next chancellor have gone through the roof. This is after 12 years of governing. It's almost unheard of in the annals of Western democracies for approval ratings to be so high for a leader who's been in office for so long. The AFD's gone off a cliff. But if you go online, if you start, um, as I sort of recommend everybody should occasionally, if you go online, you will see people who've never left Kentucky claiming that Germany is a no-go zone. People who live in Germany are voting for the woman in charge on a scale that may even dwarf her previous results. One million souls invited into that country where they had nowhere else to go, being used by racists in Britain and America to claim that Germany is now on its knees and Germany is now a, a, a no-go zone. I love getting tweets from America telling me about London, telling me how awful London is. It used to just come from places like Devon and Cornwall. You get an elderly racist in Cornwall telling you that London is a no-go zone. If you like it so much, why don't you move to Tower Hamlets? And you say, mate, you're in Devon. Yeah, yeah, you're probably not more qualified than I am to talk about what living in London is like. But that, that, that's old school. That's racism 1.0. We've moved it on a whole new level now. Now you get tweets and texts and messages and you see them on Fox News from people who live in Kentucky, people who don't even have a passport, who will explain to you why Germany and Sweden and France are all no-go zones. French electorate just pretty resoundingly rejected a fascist, and yet people in America and Britain who quite like fascism are, are, are spluttering incomprehensibly. And that's all I've got. I'm really sorry, because there's an element of a kind of stuck record on this. But what else is there? What else has Donald Trump done that would explain why people will switch off their brains on this sort of scale? If I am being investigated for corruption and I fire the bloke investigating me, I might as well wear a T-shirt saying crook. What did Donald Trump say during his election campaign? I could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue. I could shoot someone dead on Fifth Avenue and they'd still love me. So my question is why? And all I've got is that he's made racism great again. Fat echoes of Brexit there as well, of course. People who've spent the last 20 or 30 years being profoundly and rightly ashamed of the bigotries and prejudices lurking in their hearts have suddenly been able to uh, articulate them again. Suddenly it's acceptable again. Suddenly you can get rewarded with a radio show if you're one of the most prominent racists in the country. It's fantastic. It's a great time to be a racist. We've made racism great again. And that, to me, is the only explanation as to how Donald Trump can fire the bloke investigating him for the kind of uh, allegations that would once have been in the realm of a Hollywood thriller. In fact, it was. The Manchurian candidate. The idea that a foreign government can somehow insinuate their man into the White House. 
used to be in the realms of fiction. For the record, it, it, it's unlikely that Vladimir Putin actually wanted Donald Trump to win. I think he just wanted Hillary Clinton to have a broken wing when she got into the White House, to have all these questions hanging over. But I don't know. That's why we need an investigation. What do you do if you're worried about an investigation? Fire the investigator. How do you pass that off to enough members of the public to get away with it? Sell them a lie, securing the knowledge that they'll swallow it whole. And they do. Why do I know that's not an unfair observation to make about Donald Trump? Because he told me. He told me, and he told you, that he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and they'd still love him. So the question I have for you is why? Focus on that. Focus on that Fifth Avenue line and look at that. Use that as a lens through which to view the Russia investigation. The head of the FBI, who wiped off overnight 10 points from Hillary Clinton's lead when he went public with the uh, resurrected investigation into her emails, again, you know, uh, the mother of all red herrings. Yeah, we might have a president who was kind of put in place by Russia. Yeah, but emails. Yeah. So the head of the FBI who wiped 10 points overnight of Hillary Clinton's lead was apparently secretly working for Hillary Clinton all along. Love it. The head of the FBI who single-handedly and very incomprehensibly, by his own admission, it makes him feel nauseous now looking back what he did, he wiped out her lead while not mentioning that they already had sufficient grounds for an investigation into Donald Trump's links with Russia. They already knew, for example, that the man he appointed subsequently as national security advisor was susceptible to blackmail. They already knew all this. The FBI didn't mention it in the, in the last few days of that campaign. Many people argue, I think correctly, that he handed victory to Donald Trump when he did that, James Comey. So now Donald Trump has fired him. The Trump Trumpets have to sort of manufacture, look, he's just shot someone dead on Fifth Avenue. We have to come up with a way of justifying this. How can we possibly justify he's just shot some? Oh, look, look, they're so stupid. Just throw in the emails line again. They'll swallow it. They'll still swallow it. Like, 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 you know, 20,000 deleted emails is a massive smoking gun. How many people never delete emails? 2014, they looked into this. The information and the explanation given was pretty copper bottomed. Uh, they, they were told, secretaries of state, do not delete emails that are linked to your job. But you can delete the ones that aren't. Do an investigation and somehow that's bigger than a possible link with the Kremlin? Quite incredible. So here's the question. 03456060973. What else is there? If, if you've got an investigation into possible links with the Kremlin and you fire the lead investigator, what possible reason can people have for not smelling a rat? Answer, he's made racism great again. And if you do that, you are home and dry. So depressing a conclusion to arrive at. And most liberals have been frightened of arriving at it. But what else is there? What else is there? 03456060973 is the number you need. It's quarter past ten. Hey, let me sort of hold me, take me by the hand and lead me back into into calmer waters. The President of the United States of America, under investigation for collusion with a foreign power, fires the man investigating him. On any other day, at any other point in history, that would be game over, right? Or at least the beginning of the end. And it might well prove to be. There are echoes here of, of Watergate, echoes of Richard Nixon. But when he tries to style it out, what is he betting on? What is he banking on? That's the only question I want you to answer. And you can answer it, hopefully, in a way that contradicts my conclusion, that it's all about making racism great again. What else is it? What else is it that he's given to people? All these white supremacists who are marching around college campuses claiming that they've got the whip hand again now. All these internet warriors claiming that Germany and Sweden and France are, are, are places where angels fear to tread despite the fact that voters in Germany, Sweden and France don't recognise the reality that's being described. What else is there? If it's not that, what is it? You know that Kushner's family have had to say sorry for essentially telling Chinese investors that in return for half a million dollars they can have a special green card that brings them into America and will probably get them access to the president. It's, it's, it's just corrupt on a scale that, well, I'd like to say no one predicted, but the tragedy is everybody did predict it, except those people who don't mind. And my question is, why don't they mind? And all I've got, I'm so sorry, all I've got is he's made, it, he's made racism great again. And if people who aren't racist don't get it. How can it be such a massive deal for you to be allowed to be racist again? 
How can it mean so much to you to be allowed to say these things? How can it be more important than your children's future that you're allowed to abuse a black man in the street or describe a Muslim in terms that 10 years ago would have been unacceptable? How can it be such a big deal? 0345 606 0973. I'll take any answer you've got, but you know what mine is. Um, I'm embarrassed to tell you that I am currently being investigated for epic corruption, bribery, and uh, being a, 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 a smuggled in secret agent of the BBC. But luckily, I fired the bloke who was conducting the investigation, so everybody's happy. That's what's happened in America, except it's rather more important. It's the FBI who have seen their head man fired while undertaking an investigation into the possibility that Donald Trump was helped into the White House by Vladimir Putin. And yet you know that on both sides of the Atlantic, people will be queuing up to pretend that that's not what's happened. Donald Trump will be leading the line, a man who said he could shoot someone on Fifth Avenue and they would still love him. Who's they? People so blinded by something that they no longer care about corruption, they no longer care about truth, they no longer care about their country. What do they care about? Making racism great again. From this side of the Atlantic, that's all I've got. What have you got? What answer have you got to that question? Is if he shot someone dead on Fifth Avenue, why would people still love him? Why would they pretend that he hadn't? What is it? that is being pulled over their eyes. Milton is, appropriately enough, in New York. Milton, what would you like to say? Hey, good morning. I love listening to you as I drive to work every morning. Good man. I hope it's a very long journey. Uh, yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, I was listening to your conversation this morning, and it's, it's frightening. I mean, I live in New York. I live on Long Island. I drive into Manhattan every day. And most of my friends who I, um, you know, mix with, whatever, we, we didn't vote for Donald Trump. I mean, I did have some friends who voted for him. Um, but there's most how, how do they friends. feel now, the ones that did vote for him? Where are they now? Um, a lot of them have regretted it. A lot of them are worried about the country. I've got one friend who actually moved to, um, to Arizona. And so blindly blind faith for, for, for Trump. Um, and when this healthcare bill was passed at the weekend, we kind of got into it on Facebook a little bit and they finally said, well, maybe I did make a mistake. Yes. And, I was like, and, and the ones that won't, the ones that, the ones that won't contemplate the possibility that they've made a mistake, the ones that would still cheer him if he shot someone dead on Fifth Avenue. I've yeah. been very simplistic this morning, but maybe it's time for simple truths. They're just, they're just, they're just celebrating the fact that they're allowed to be racist again. Or is that a little unfair of me? Um, no, I agree with you. I think you, you, I think you're right. Um, uh, look, I, I told your uh, producer when I when I called in. I'm the assistant principal of a large urban elementary school, and we've got 1,300 kids. And out of that, there must be. I would say three to four hundred, uh, 400 undocumented kids in our school. They were coming in crying, some of them, saying, you know, my parents are going to be deported when Trump... Uh, and people just are buying into this, and it's scary. It really is... Well, that's scary. not quite like, the same as racism. I, I, to, to be fair, undocumented or, 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 or illegal immigrants being removed for the car, it's probably unfair to tell someone in the, in the boondocks that the reason why his coal mine is shut is because of illegal immigration in, in, in New Mexico or New York. That, that's a kind of lie with a racist subtext. But it's not the same as being actually racist to want illegal immigration to be curtailed or reversed, is it? No, that's true, but, but they, you know, they never had that before. They were never scared to come in to school thinking, or, you know, when I go home, my parents are going to be there, which is what some God. of them are saying. Yeah. And these are, you know, seven, eight, and nine-year-olds. Yeah, and that's, and that's kind of the Fifth Avenue well, point, isn't it? Because that really is despicable and disgusting. You do, these are children right. that you're describing, and some people will be going, yeah, good, yee-haw. And, and to top that off, you know, we had um, some kids in, in school who were who actually telling some of the other kids, your parents are going to be deported. You're going to be deported, ha-ha-ha. How, how do you discipline that? I, I, I wish I was surprised, but but I'm not. I mean, it, it, it's it's um, it's chilling, but true. How do you discipline a child who said to another child, "You're going to be deported"? Um, for us, that was a case of uh, having some quite honest discussions with them and their parents, saying that this is you know completely unacceptable um, and goes against everything that our school believes in. 
and uh, it, luckily it subsided and I think it was riding on the wave of Trump being inaugurated and being um, being, being elected but, but I, you know I think he appeals to the masses who are in middle America and, and yet the average it. income of his voters is, is, is around the $70,000 mark poor white people voted for Hillary right. Clinton we, we've fallen into a trap in this country of falling for the notion of economically left behind that's not what happened at all racism isn't, isn't, isn't a working class issue quite the opposite actually because uh, people are more likely to feel commonality with the fellow oppressed this is a sort of really ugly middle class it's kind of like the, 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 the tweedy uh, what's the American equivalent of tweeds it's probably blazers it's the blazer clad golf club right. racists who are on the march, isn't it? Yeah, no, you're right. And, and the interesting thing is, it's the it's this class of people who, yes, they voted for him, but I, I just, I'm not sure where it's going to go, to be honest with you. Well, I, I want to know where it's going to go, because if, if you get fired from investigating the president over allegations of Russian corruption, Russian collusion... You might as well wave a flag saying allegations are, are that there's more there's more to this than meets the eye. There's more smoke, perhaps, and fire than initially suspected. Thank you very much indeed, Milton. That's a, a fascinating job you've got. I hope you ring me again. It's, how did an English bloke end up the assistant principal of a school in New York? Uh, Christian is in Norwich. Christian, what would you like to say? Oh, hi, James. Uh, I just wanted to respond really... Um by, uh, by osmosis, a conversation <laughs> I've had with my mum this weekend about, uh, about Brexit. And oh, yeah. She believes quite deeply emotionally that Brexit is a really good thing and that Theresa May is doing an amazing job about Brexit. And I fired off many, many facts and counter arguments, you know, many of which I've learned from listening to your show. And it just didn't matter. Doesn't cut it through at just, all, it does it? It didn't matter on, on, on any level. The irony is that she's married to uh, my father's Italian. Uh, and uh, he's been living in this country for 50 years. But that, that's another day. Has, has your mum heard this? Has your mum heard this from Theresa May? Well, there were plenty of voices uh, suggesting where, what I should do in this. Of course, there were quite a lot of voices suggesting that I should go down the leave route. But as I say, I, I approach this decision in the way I approach other important decisions. Look at the facts uh, and uh, come to a view. And when I put all that together, when I think about the potential risk to jobs, the uncertainties for our economy if we were to leave the European Union, when I think about the security, the discussions I've had within the EU, because I do believe we are more secure in the EU. Has, has your mum heard that? I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm going to introduce it to her. I don't know if it's on the LBC page, because, yeah, for me, just the utter hypocrisy of, uh, of, of statement. And, and, and how does, um, how does your mum... Because it's very uncomfortable. That's one of the great problems about being a snowflake, is that you're not actually comfortable insulting other people. The other side do nothing else but insult you, and yet you want to give people the benefit of the really doubt, and, and you don't want to really say difficult. racism is the only possible explanation for this, it, it, especially not your mum's married to an Italian. So how do you compute it? The, the, this rejection of absolutely incontrovertible controvertible fact and evidence that is becoming endemic? Well, that's a good question. Um, I mean, you know, the, the way that I manage um, my response to things generally is to forgive her for not being given the right information at the right time or being given false information or being told lies by, you know, the, the kind of, the, you know, the racist uh, uh, media, shall we say. And if, but, if yeah. Theresa May were, were being investigated for uh, epic corruption, and fired the person conducting the investigation, your mum would, would, would come across, right? She wouldn't still be desperately searching the internet for, 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 for the alt-right explanations as to why James Comey was a secret Hillary Clinton sleeper agent all along. <laughs> um, I, I, she doesn't really... She, she just responds to the Sun and the Daily Mail, unfortunately, so it's not really a... She's a, lost. A, 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 I see, yeah, no, exactly. Um, it, it all depends upon how it's spun, doesn't it? Because... You know, we're, we're here having a conversation based on what we see quite clearly with regards to, you know, the Trump administration and the firing of, of, uh, of you know, this executive or whatever his position is. Mm. But we don't, we don't know how that's being spun on, on the kind of, you know, the Outback radio station. No, I, 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 I do have one eye on that all the time. And, and I used to do it with, 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 with a sort of wry smile. I used to think, oh, these guys are funny. But they have actually driven the political debate in this country and, and, and even more so in America in a way that I don't think anybody saw coming. That's why I started by saying, I wonder whether Barack Obama thinks he should have sued over the birth certificate um, libels. Because uh, I, the only reason why he didn't want to imagine is because he just didn't think there were enough stupid people out there who would believe it. Well, he was wrong. And the stupid people are still in charge. Breaking news just in. Uh, Moriarty has fired Sherlock Holmes. 
Um, I, I don't know what you're going to make of that. Sherlock Holmes apparently very close to getting the lowdown on Moriarty's international career of criminal activity, but just in the nick of time, Moriarty has fired Sherlock Holmes as the lead investigator of that alleged criminality. Moriarty's supporters are pointing out that he's only done so on the say-so of an attorney general who was recused from the investigation himself over fears that he was very close to um, Moriarty, and a deputy or an assistant attorney general who um, apparently has given Donald Trump the heads up on why Comey had to go, despite the fact that Comey was one of the few people Donald Trump never seemed to have a problem with. Ha! <sighs> Moriarty, Holmes, Trump, Comey, Sessions, where next? And what else is there? I hate this conclusion. Well, I kind of hate it because I love understanding things, but I hate what it says um, about about us as a, as a population, as a species. Trump's model assumes that voters are like naive children, James. I used to think he was wrong about it. I think I overestimated what people are really like. And then a Trumpian shame exclamation mark at the end. It, it, not all Trump supporters are racist, as this, t um, this is a tweet, right? The last one was a text. But nearly all are people who believe in simplistic, one dimensional solutions to complex problems. And then you sort of think, well, what is a simplistic? What did he offer up as a simplistic, one dimensional solution? If you're cursed with a functioning intellect, you can't, you can't think of anything that Donald Trump offered up that looks like a, even a simplistic, one dimensional solution. But actually, you're doing it again. You're overthinking it again. Simplistic one-dimensional solution. Surely that involves some sort of economic theory or at least something that resembles an ideology. No, it doesn't. A simplistic one-dimensional solution to a complex problem is just saying make America great again or we want our country back. You know, people like me sit here thinking, but what is the simplistic one-dimensional solution that he's offered up? And, and you think, oh, it, what's it going to be? A very, very uh, clumsy version of, of, of Keynesian economics? No, mate, simplistic. Y you need to find a word that's even more simplistic than simplistic. You need to find a worldview that's even more one-dimensional than a one-dimensional worldview. What is his solution to complex problems? Make America great again. Build a wall. And we don't get to sneer anymore because we want our country back. And we want purple passports, or blue ones, I can't remember, it's so hard to keep up. So what is it that these people get in return for their willful delusion? What is it they get? What are they being given by Donald Trump that makes them go, yeah, nothing to see here, nothing to see here, bloke being investigated by the FBI, fires the head of the FBI, absolutely standard, seems legit. What are they getting? They're not going to get money, not going to get jobs, not going to get a wall. The Muslim ban has been removed from the White House website, that was never going to happen. What are they getting? Answer, make racism great again. And listen, no one would like to be wrong more than I would. Just prove it. 0345 6060 973. Mikey's in Crawley. Mikey, what do you reckon? Hi. Um, I think that uh, Donald Trump is where he is because uh, a lot of black people thought that it was easy having someone like him represent them, not remembering that this man, back in the 70s, actually refused to allow black people to, to, to live in his, his palaces. Furthermore, this man oh. had a lot of black people flanking him on every corner when he's on the television. So this gives the impression that he he's a... Uh, Magnanimous, you know, he, 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 his, his history doesn't matter anymore. You know, and well, I think, yeah, no, I, I, I get that. I mean, you're speaking about a relatively small part of his support that, that, that possibly didn't realise they'd be on the menu if, if, if the sort of chomping white supremacist side of his support got, got the whip hand, which is what has happened now. But I'm thinking more about the people who say it's got nothing to do with racism. And, and now we're sort of seeing that he is, uh, uh, well, look, let me, let's stick to facts, let's not even speculate. He's fired the bloke that's investigating him for possibly being in Vladimir Putin's pocket. And how do people rationalise that? I can understand how a black voter might think they've done something very stupid, but somebody who, who is, is actually now making excuses for him still, what are they getting in return for their, for their excuse making? False confidence. But no, what does that mean, Mikey? What do you mean false confidence? False confidence in what? <laughs> In, in, in the economy, in, in making America great again, you know, they, they, they think that uh, at last someone has come along who, who, who can do for us. 
But this man is not doing for anybody. And, and that becomes unshakable then, does it, until impeachment? Because if you're getting investigated for colluding with a foreign power, an enemy state is accused of getting helping you get elected and you fire the bloke who's investigating it if that Donald doesn't work, if that doesn't be, wake people up nothing will Donald Trump will not be impeached because this man has developed a, 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 a means of smoke and mirrors uh, that people people don't really pay attention to to what he's doing the, the people who should pay attention. He's, he's smoking mirrors. I'm more, more interested in smoke and fire. There's no smoke and mirrors. There's, he doesn't even pretend. He, he, he doesn't even sort of offer it up as, a, as like the dodgy dossier. He just says something that's demonstrably untrue. He says it again and again and again, and still they cheer. I, I would love it to be something else. I would really love it to be something else, because it's such a bleak conclusion to arrive at. How can he be forgiven for firing the bloke investigating international corruption on an unprecedented scale? Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. It wasn't him, anyway. He was just acting on the Attorney General's advice. The Attorney General had to recuse himself from the investigation into alleged links with Russia because he was uh, open to accusations of being part of the conspiracy. So then you're left with the Deputy Attorney General. No doubt got his eye on the big job. Given the, the, the task, you have to conclude, get rid of this guy. Get rid of this guy. And then he does the business, comes up with all these rationales and reasons for getting rid of him because of the way he conducted the investigation over Hillary Clinton's email, an investigation which everybody, whatever side of the fence they're on, recognises as having helped Donald Trump's campaign. Oh, Shay's in Chiswick. Shay, what would you like to say? Hi, James. I'm a big fan and first-time well, caller. Ditto. Um, Carry on. <laughs> So basically, I just wanted to add your explanation, which I think is spot on, but I wanted to add on the evangelical Christian point. Um, yes. And I'm interested in them because I'm particularly angry with them. And I think they're a massive part of the, why Trump kind of got into power. I think about 84% of the vote of him. And it literally, they will accept anything that he does as long as abortion is banned and gays have no rights. So it's literally, and guns, so it's basically gays. So you're, so you're giving me, this is your attempt to say, don't worry, James, it's not just about racism. It's also about homophobia, <laughs> misogyny, and yes. gun control. Exactly. Happy, and happy it, days. Happy days. Especially with Gorsuch now on the Supreme Court, that was their number one priority. So as long as they can get someone who brings them closer to their goal of abortion being banned for everyone, they literally do not care what this man does. Those are the three priorities, and it doesn't matter who it is. So you can't reason with someone like that because they are blinkers and they will not accept anything that this person does. Even the most ridiculous things like this, uh, obviously, firing James Comey, which is just totally ridiculous. No, it's not. He's done it on the advice of the Attorney General and the Assistant Attorney General who have conducted a full and frank investigation into James Comey's handling of the Hillary Clinton email thing many, many months ago. But Jeff Sessions himself is a disaster. I mean... All these people are a disaster, but as long as they get these three things and abortion for them is murder. So, so I, yeah, so, so we're looking the other way. That, that, that's what it is. Yeah. They, they will hold their nose if what they're getting is. And so we've got the revivified racist, which I think is huge, but, but, but you're right, not exclusive. You've also got the, the, the completely bigoted so called Christian who, who thinks yeah. that, all, that, that men should have the right. They want to go back to the days when if a woman got pregnant, she was effectively enslaved for the rest of her life. Yeah. You've got the people who think we should have. Uh, even less gun control. I think that they've removed the regulations that prevented people with a history of mental illness from getting guns, didn't they? They've already done that. Yeah, guns yeah. everywhere. We need more guns. Guns are great. So guns are wicked. Are so yeah, abortion people... guns. And what was the other one? And, and gays. Gays. Oh, gays. oh crikey. How could I forget and the gays? Down with them as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So it's all these ancient it. hatreds. He's just feeding them. Yeah. And, and he doesn't even buy into it. He's accused of sexual assault on grand scales by numerous women. He's boasted about being a sex offender himself. His history of marital fidelity is, is, is comparable with that of, I don't know, Genghis Khan. The, the man doesn't stand for any of the things that these people like. But because he just says it out loud and says it, and he's rich and he's been on the telly a lot, they just swallow it. Yeah. It's, it is that simple, isn't it? We've spent a year trying to overcomplicate things. Absolutely. He is their dream, dream candidate because he says all the things they want to hear, but they haven't actually looked under the hood of the car, which is that he's not going to deliver on any of these things. Don't care. Because he probably can deliver a Supreme Court reversal on, on um, uh, abortion legislation, or at least they can sort of feel that they're not in the back seat anymore. They're at least in the passenger seat, and uh, any minute now they can reach over and grab the steering wheel. Guns? Yeah, great. Everyone needs more guns. Terrified. Terrified of, of, of Muslims in Germany, not terrified of massacres in their own country.
Yeah. So, I mean, the best they can get is each state could basically have the ability to ban abortion. So then they would get all their southern states banning abortion. I mean, that's the best they're going to get. But even that would be brilliant for them. They'd be like, at least now I can stop in my state gays adopting children. I can stop abortion in these states and I can stop these things and therefore Trump is... And, you know, I think a year ago, if we'd been having this conversation, I'd have been a little bit smug about how it couldn't happen here. We've moved on. We're more civilised. We're more educated. We're more enlightened. And yet the same the same forces of, of, of reversal and reactionary prejudice are, are on the on the rise in this country now as well. Unfortunately, yes. I, I don't even want to get started on Brexit too much today. I, I'm just, okay, fair I, I can't. Mate, just have a biscuit. Have a biscuit, Shane. I need to, I need to cup of Earl Grey. <laughs> nice cup of Earl Grey. Or chamomile. Are oh, you Chiswick? Oh, it's chamomile all the way in Chiswick. Well, I, I met you once, actually, in Chiswick, uh, and it was, a, it was a highlight. It was a highlight. Oh, was I nice to you? You were very nice to me, and you tweeted me afterwards. Okay. And, we had, and you did a shout-out to my mum as well. What so a guy. Like, what a guy. Oh, what a lovely guy. I, I don't know where people get the idea that, I, that, that I'm not absolutely charming. 10.45 is the time. Uh, well, Shay gave us a, a bit of a heads up. He said, don't worry, James. It's not just people who will forgive Donald Trump anything, anything at all, because he's made racism great again. You've also got to remember that you've got the um, anti-choice Christian lobby. You've got the homophobics who claim that they have some sort of scriptural rationale for their bigotries. And you've got the people who think everyone should be able to buy guns, even children. In fact, I think more people are shot by toddlers in America than, than Muslims every year. But hey, Matthew's in Romford. Matthew, help me out, mate. <laughs> I'll do my best, James. Come on. Be well today. Come on. So, my, uh, my, my, my take on this, the, the whole thing with, with Trump and, and America, I think we should always like sort of preface that it's not the whole of America. He's that who are like enthralled to him or, you know, accept his uh, very odd smoke and mirrors, which as you just pointed out earlier, is not smoke and mirrors at all. It's, there's no illusion. There's no sort of, there's I mean, no illusion, it's no. just literally, I tell you what it is. It's a fella who, 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 and I've never understood this, and this is going to be a little rude because I've got friends that buy these books. People who yeah. think that they can buy a book, read it, and then become a millionaire. He, yeah. th that's kind of who Donald Trump speaks to. So it's not just thick people. It's, it's, it's people who are just a little bit deluded. You buy this book or you come to my university. I'm Donald Trump. I can barely spell my own name. But I'm going to found a university and you come there. Donald Trump made a lot of money because he inherited a lot of money. There's, there's no mystery there. He was born on third base. He thinks he scored a home run. But he speaks to people yeah. who think that he can tell them the secret of scoring a home run. Doesn't he? Yeah. He, he, he does, and he, he also, I mean, he, he's also bringing back, and I mean, the whole Make America Great Again. It's, essentially, Donald Trump represents a constituency of people whose, who's, uh, I guess, their values or the, the time that they aspire to live in is, is the 50s, before the, the nasty 1960s came along with its liberal reform and... and all those people having fun and, and, and feeling you felt left out of that fun. You must hate all those hippies and those those mods and those rockers. All those, that, that's big part of it, isn't it? Especially on the anti-feminist side of things. All these people actually having sex yeah. and women who enjoy it. Why can't, why, I mean, that's just so far away from my own experience. You see it on the back benches in our own parliament from the, the sort of weaponized misogynists that are on the march at the moment. And, it, and it's just so interesting that we now live in, 2000, in 2017. Like, I, I kind of thought, I, I never expected in my lifetime that the kind of people from the from the 70s were going to, and the, and the 50s were going to sort of have a, have a comeback, if you know what I mean, and, and naturally be able to, to take control. But, I mean, that he is extremely unpopular. I mean, it is... His disapproval ratings are epic. They're, they're biblical. He's the most unpopular president. And, and what he's done with Comey is, is not going to... Uh, I don't think that's going to uh, particularly boost him. He's clearly like someone who's extremely impulsive. If he was taking proper advice, he would never have got rid of Comey unless he, he knows that the writing's on the wall and that he's... Just, just, no, he's, instru like he's instructed his, his uh, placement in the Attorney General's office to, to, to do it for him. And there's, there's no other... Ex you, can only, you can see that from his tweets. He's apparently he's shouting at the television whenever Russia got mentioned. It's, oh, hang on, I've just, I've just got some more breaking news in. Apparently 12 passengers on the Orient Express have just voted to have Hercule Poirot thrown off the train. So, um, <laughs> nothing, to, nothing to see there. 12 passengers on the Orient Express voting to have Hercule Poirot thrown off that, that train. Carry, ca carry on, Matthew. It, w w the base is the issue, isn't it? Because you can talk about right, disapproval yeah, ratings yeah. till you're blue in the face. It's the question that civilization faces is how many people really will 
look the other way, forgive him, pretend it never happened when he shoots someone dead on Fifth Avenue. To use his own analogy, that's the thing. Yeah. We just don't know how many of them there are. Well, you, you know, you hear about these these poor people, vulnerable people that um, get caught up in scams. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I think I remember listening to a sh one of your shows once where you covered this. And um, you know, these people that are having their life savings taken, and the pe and the, and the, the children of them that are often trying to like get a court order so they can have control of their bank accounts because they keep giving it to these to these scammers. And it's because it's. People don't want to admit. When they, they come back for more and more and more. It's almost yeah, unbelievable, yeah. The, the, the idea that once you've sent £10,000 to someone who's going to get their dead uncle's 30 million quid out of a, yeah. uh, a West African bank, and then they come back a month later and say, oh, we haven't quite got, we need another 10 grand, and they're more likely to pay the second time. It's quite yeah. incredible, but you're right. People can't admit it. They can't admit the same, it. The same technique of delusion is, is, is employed amongst a lot of his base as well, particularly when as the excellent point that the previous caller made about the, the fact that he, they see him as batting for their, for their side on a whole range of issues. I also would, would um, and, and so they're just willing to give him, to just ignore everything else and just put the blinkers on and look at him through rose tinted specs. I would just make the, the, the uh, uh, just another quick point, which is that it, it's also, I, I think, um, uh, as well as, uh, as, as as well as then seeing that he's he's supporting uh, their point, his base are also uh, of the mind that this is a rigged system. So if you've got, so we can't, so we can't lose, can he? In, in that, it's just yeah. a question of how many of them there are. And you can talk talk about a rigged system. I like it's a, it's a, they, you're right. They are persuaded that everything is corrupt. You saw it in this country where people were saying that if. If the referendum result went the other way, it would be proof that it had been rigged. And you'd sort of say, well, what if it goes your way? Surely, if it's going to be rigged, it's going to be... No, 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 I don't take my pen to the ballot box. People, once you've got that, and that's, of course, the, the, the history of far-right politics, and I presume sort of extremist left politics as well, persuade people that the system is broken, then there's no such thing as a liar anymore. Dave is in Romford. Uh, there's two calls from Romford. Dave, what would you like to say? Um... Very much what a previous caller said is so true. Um, I was just listening and thought about, I actually have relatives that moved to America 30 years ago. Yeah. And it's a general consensus between certain parts of my family that they moved there to get back to Britain the way it was 30 years before that. So they were going back to the 50s. So they didn't like the way the country was going. And they did move down to deep south. I myself mixed race. Um, it must be awkward. I found out later on in life. Well, I didn't, I've been over there once. It was interesting. Yeah. Um, I found out later on in life that my dad's now married to another guy. Wow. And everything they hated was sort of, you know... Life. Pretty much what they moved away for. Yes. And they... We couldn't believe it. We still obviously still speak to them. They cannot sing the praises of Donald Trump enough. And we're sort of thinking, who are these blinkered idiots? Mm. Well, you um, tell me. You're related to them. Oh, Mm, what are they getting? Okay. When he shoots someone dead on Fifth Avenue, to use his own analogy, or when he grabs a woman by the vagina, to use his own admission, what is it that they get in return for pretending that's not a big deal? That he's still protecting their values. And if he shot someone dead on Fifth Avenue, they must have done something. That's what it'll be. And they will believe whatever he says. That there would have been a reason he did it. Honestly, no, but, that, but we need that. we need we need something more than that, isn't that? It's 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 because there's lots of people that can tell lies. Just I very few people are so uh, because they're so brainwashed that whatever he says is going to be for justification as long as he brings about the change that they want in their own cause. And that will be the making racism great again. The, uh, the kind of va va racism great. There's something I'd like to say on that. He's not. Uh, he's he's not. As stupid in some ways, because I don't think he's making racism great. What he's actually doing very subtly is making racism acceptable. Yes, of course. I was nicking his slogan. Every, but, yeah, but then it will make it great. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and then you've got, you know, everyone can have a gun. We've already made it easier for people with a history of mental health problems to buy guns. Yeah, sure, the black guy walking towards you because he was going to mug you, you know that. Exactly that. We're back to the, the was it Trayvon Martin? I, I, I get some, some of these yeah. cases mixed up. There's been so many of them, so that's fine. Yeah. And you saw that, actually. That, 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 ah, that was, that was an early Trump kind of thing. Of course you should be allowed to shoot a black kid who you are a little bit suspicious of, but who turns out not to have been doing anything wrong. No, and that, that's where you head with guns and with race. And then we also want to get women back in the uh, back in the kitchen. All these flipping women, especially that Hillary Clinton thinking she should be president. Women should.
my dinner ready and be grateful for the fact that I've given them some housekeeping money and they should have sex with me whenever I want and maybe one day they might enjoy it. So then you've got the abortion yeah. legislation that's coming in as well. You said that point there. Shoot that black man even though he didn't have a gun. But what yeah. you've got to remember is, he would have, later on, if he didn't do it that day, he would have had one the next day. Oh, of course he would, because he's black. So, yeah, so we've, we've just, justified it now, because at some point in his life, he will have done something, so you've actually stopped a later crime. So you're actually doing a service. Yeah. Prevention's better than kill. It's scary. It's horrendous that we're living in these times, to tell well, you the truth. I, I, well, it is and it isn't, because, you know, uh, until they drag us kicking and screaming out of the studio, at least we can carry on pointing it out, and they can carry on having their tiny little heads oh, yeah, explode oh, yeah. when they... when they. You have a huge support on your side. You what? Uh, you've got a huge support on your side. It's just making certain idiots in certain parts of the world realise it as well. Well, yes, and unfortunately, <laughs> the, the most effective way of doing that is to hold up a mirror, but that is the one thing that they will never forgive you for, is holding up a... Look, here you are. This is what you look like. <laughs> you nasty racist homophobe pretending that it's all about sovereignty or, or, or borders this is what you are you're a nasty racist homophobe and you hate women because you've never really managed to kiss one that liked you and they, they'll kill you mate seven years bad luck for breaking a mirror I, i've got about seven million years of bad luck coming up for all the mirrors that people have punched after i've held them up a couple of rearview mirror glances on that conversation about donald trump em emma's nailed it this is strong i'm nicking this uh, i might have to change the language slightly because you're clearly far too au fait with the vocabulary of, of, of um, a con artists. It's, all, it's in Mark Twain, isn't it? It's in, in Huckleberry Finn and, and Tom Sawyer, the guys who move from town to town just ripping people off. Here you go. It's not brainwashing, James. He's a huckster. And the huckster makes the rube think that he and the rube are the same. So huckster, con man, rube, victim, or Mark. Uh, it's sympathy and identity all mixed into one. So once the rube is convinced, any attack on the huckster is an attack on the identity and values of the rube. That's brilliant. And that actually helps me understand. But the problem is, what has he used to uh, appeal to the rube, to make the rube think that they're one and the same, and you're left with that very grim list of ancient hatreds and bigotries that we're seeing back on the march. Um, this is from Penny, who describes herself, says, I am a psychologist. I think Americans who voted for him and don't care what he does project their emotional need for a big, strong daddy who will protect the family, them, ruthlessly, as they feel anxious and confused. Their world is no longer predictable and safe, except it is. Their world is incredibly predictable and safe, arguably the most predictable and safest that it's ever been, until they go online and see all the lies about Germany and France and Sweden, which informs the alt-right in America. Incredibly, people who don't even have a passport um, are persuaded that people who live here know less about what it's like here than they do. And we are doing this, as Penny, with Mrs. May. Blimey.